First, she absolutely obliterated Aspie's paper claiming Uyghurs were being sold into slave labour. And now she has a new report showing that two allegedly credible human rights groups, Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, have also released reports claiming mass human rights abuses in Xinjiang with absolutely zero evidence, effectively relying on the trust me bro tactic and their good names to spread lies. Jack James is back. Let's get reporting. Hello, 大家好，欢迎回到外媒看中国，我是安博然。Hey, you guys, welcome back to Reports on China. I'm Andy. Just last month, the U.S. enacted a bill banning the import of goods from Xinjiang unless companies there can prove they aren't guilty of slave labour. You can watch my video on that in the link below. Now, Australian Jack James, an independent Western propaganda analyst and international law advocate, is worried Australia could pass a similar law. She reached out to then Australian Senator Rex Patrick, who had introduced a private members' bill proposing an Aussie ban on the import of Uyghur-made goods, and asked him what his evidence was of slave labour and other human rights abuses in Xinjiang. The senator admitted he was swayed by numerous reports, including Aspie's already debunked and trashed report, and expressed that he was absolutely confident that mass human rights abuses were taking place in Xinjiang. Although he didn't mention which report specifically, James decided to legally analyse two influential reports: one by Amnesty International and one by Human Rights Watch, and found they are both fundamentally flawed, lack any credible evidence, and literally need to be thrown in the bin. Today, I'll list my top five arguments against these papers, but I seriously suggest you read James's paper titled "Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch's Forced Xinjiang Labour Claims: Junk Research or Noble Cause Corruption," which I will link down below. The paper not only thoroughly debunks these two supposedly credible human rights groups, but goes as far as to argue that these groups are undeserving of the public's trust and need to undergo massive reform. Let's get started. Number five, serious lack of evidence. Amnesty International produced a 158-page report accusing the Chinese government of mass human rights abuses in Xinjiang, but only dedicated four pages to evidence, and their evidence did not stand up to any close scrutiny. Their only evidence came from four anonymous interviewees, and their interview methods would not stand up in a court of law, and therefore should also be taken with a huge grain of salt. As an international group of some repute, Amnesty should be aware of international human rights conventions when it comes to writing their reports. As James notes, for example, the European Court of Human Rights has taken a stand against relying wholly or to a decisive extent on anonymous witnesses. Considering the entire Amnesty report is hinged on anonymous interviews and anonymous interviews alone, this point alone is enough to conclude the entire report is worthless. Number four, Amnesty's translators were likely not professional. James argues that because the entire report is based on interviews, which Amnesty admit were conducted using translators fluent in Mandarin Chinese, Uyghur, Kazakh, or Kyrgyz, the use of accredited professional translators is absolutely and fundamentally important. James notes. When dealing with matters as serious as victim testimony of human rights abuse allegations, it is important that any translators involved are professionally accredited and comply with a professional code of ethics. Such codes may oblige translators to maintain professional integrity standards, which include independence, detachment, impartiality, and objectivity. Ensure accurate translation that preserves the complete content of the testimony without any omission or distortion, and maintain clear role boundaries so that translators do not engage in advocacy, guidance, or advice. Since this was likely not the case, the entire report can be thrown in the bin. Number three, Amnesty's witnesses were not cross-examined. Cross-examination is extremely important in witness testimony, since it can help identify inherent flaws in omission, embroidery, or implausibility. And as James's paper notes, is beyond any doubt the greatest legal engine ever invented for the discovery of truth. James also argues that cross-examination is extremely important in avoiding tunnel vision, which she says is a pervasive contributor in nearly every case of wrongful conviction. Tunnel vision encompasses confirmation bias, hindsight bias, and outcome bias, 
As such, if these biases are not recognised and counterbalanced, they can corrupt the fact-finding process, not just in the criminal justice system, but also in the human rights advocacy field. You won't be surprised then when I tell you that Amnesty's key witnesses were not cross-examined. Number two, Aspie burned an evidence debunk. The Human Rights Watch report was just as sloppy, but for different reasons. Their evidence focused on six sources, including media reports from New York Times, the BBC, and Radio Free Asia, as well as that terrible Aspie report, which James thoroughly debunked last time. All six sources were thoroughly obliterated, with each source requiring at least a couple of pages in James's report to methodically point out their errors and why each was unreliable. Aspie, though, is such a trash source that it only required two paragraphs in her summary. James says the Aspie report has already been proven to be a reprehensible piece of strategic disinformation propaganda. Ouch. <laughs> Number one, human rights groups and their warped logic. James argues that human rights groups like Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International could definitely have staff who know that their evidence is weak, but who fundamentally believe that human rights abuses are going on anyway, and therefore employ an ends justifies the means calculation when it comes to human rights. In other words, they feel so deeply that what they are alleging about Xinjiang is true, even though they know their evidence doesn't stack up, that they're willing to tweak their reports and produce substandard reports, hoping that people will believe them anyway. This is extremely dangerous and has been the key in many cases of wrongful criminal convictions. For example, where people have been put away for murder by cops who ensured conviction using dodgy and illegal means just because they felt deep down inside that they had the right guy. James argues that fundamental reform needs to take place at these human rights groups to ensure they produce factual and solid reports in the future. And she adds that this can only happen if the donors of these groups agitate for change. She asks, are they paying for human rights advocacy or are they paying for a China bad story? Good question. James's report, which you can read by following the link under this video, is filled with so many more amazing and thorough arguments against Amnesty International and Human Rights Watch that I seriously recommend you read it for yourself. It's only about 80 pages and you can get through it in an hour or so. It's clear that ASPE are agitating Australia's new government to push forward with legislation banning the import of Xinjiang goods into the country, even though Senator Patrick lost his seat in the last election. So please, if you live in Australia, contact your local member and make your voice heard. Okay, that's all I have time for today, you guys, but thank you so much for watching and let me know what you think down below. As always, I will see you all next time. Bye-bye.